Hey, good evening everybody. Tonight I'm going to show you how to make vegetable samosas. Um, I'm using phyllo pastry for this because it's really easy to do. Now, you might look at this mountain of ingredients on the counter and go like, nah, that's way too much. Actually, it's not because you can kind of group them. I just kind of threw everything out on here. First, you've got the phyllo pastry, which um, you should defrost overnight in the fridge and then leave it out for a bit. I already opened the box to check it because what you should do is you should test it by giving it a squeeze and seeing if it's pliable enough that it's going to bend and not crack and this one's doing good so that'll just stay in the box for the time being. Now, so for the ingredients, the main part is the potatoes and the frozen peas. Okay, so that's one group that I'm going to deal with after. Then the seasonings, I've got some shallots here. These are optional. If you don't want to use them, leave them out. If you want to use onion instead, go ahead. I just happen to have some of this. There's mountainous spices here. Um, by the way, here's the list of ingredients. Um, you can condense these into a bowl, which I'm going to do in a minute, or you can leave half or most of them out and just use salt and pepper, whatever you like, okay? And um, to make them traditional, you should use some fresh cilantro, but the one from the market is not looking too fresh, so I think I'll put a bit, of, I'll put a bit in there for show, um, but not all of it, okay? Right, so that's a little less intimidating when all the containers are away and you just got the spices in a bowl. Now you may have noticed I said one to two on the um, amateur and half to one on the chili powder. That's on f personal taste. The amateur lends a sort of sour flavor to it and the chili obviously whether you like it hot or not I'd use half or one. If you really like it mild either use a quarter or just leave it out. And of course, if you can't get some of these spices, just wing it. I've got all the spices in here except the mustard seeds uh, because those are going to go in with the shallots before the spices go in. So I've got the peas um, in a bowl here. Now I'm using really small peas. It works better than big ones for this. Um, so those can just stay on the counter. Next step is deal with the potatoes. I'm going to peel them and I'm going to cook them in the microwave uh, like I showed in that recipe. Here's the link here if you haven't seen it. I got those peeled and I'm just chopping them up on the plate I'm going to use to cover the bowl with. And in the meantime, do remember to preheat your oven to 350. They're all in there, but as you can see, it's a little too full for the plate, so I am going to have to flip it like that and just pop these in the microwave. Yeah, a small cutting board will work for this recipe. I managed to find a handful of fairly fresh leaves in there, so I'm just going to cut off the stems and discard them, and then just chop these up rough. That's fine. Then the shallots. So just get the ends off. Stand them up. Cut them in half and just peel off the outside layer. Yeah, you would like a fine chop on these. Well, the microwave just beeped here. So I'm going to get in here around the camera with some oven mitts because this is really hot. Let me just pop the lid off in here and I don't know if you can see the steam coming off that. You will in a minute. Yeah, those are cooked. So I'll get that over to the counter as long as you can manage to hang on to the bowl, you can use a fork and just mash them in here. Or you can transfer them to another container. If they look like they're going to start popping out the sides. Now if you've got any bits in the middle that you find are not completely cooked, 
Just throw the lid back on and toss it back in the microwave for another minute or two. Those are all mashed up, so I'm going to get the uh, spices going in the pan. One thing I should say, if you don't happen to have some ghee, which is basically just clarified butter, um, what you should do is melt some butter in the microwave and just uh, decant the top part and leave the solids in the bottom. So I'm starting to pan on medium-high here, and I'm just going to put in some oil in the bottom. Basically just enough to cover. And if that's looking too dry, you can always add a little bit more. But there is going to be butter um, in the wrapper, so you don't want to get this too greasy. Throw in a teaspoon of brown mustard seeds, or black as they call them, the dark ones. So when those start to pop, and I'll zoom in so you can actually see they do pop all over the place. So turn the heat down just a titch there and throw in the shallots to cool off the pan. Yeah, so make sure the heat's down to medium and stir it up for a bit until it smells nice. Get the spices. Toss those in. Try to make sure that you've got all the spices in the oil. Add the coriander. And the peas. After you stir that for about a minute or so, and the peas are looking like they defrosted, and that's another reason to get small ones, they just defrost so much faster. Add the cooked potatoes. and mix it all up. At this point you can actually turn the heat off and it's not going to hurt anything. Since the potatoes are already cooked what you want to do is just mix it in while it's all still warm. And I do like to use tongs for this bit for a couple of reasons. Um, it mixes it up really nicely and you can scoop up all the spices from the bottom. If you do have any uncooked bits of potatoes sticking around, you can just pick them out easily. And you know what? If a couple of the peas break, well, no one will know. Once it's cooled off enough that you can get in there with your hands, get some gloves on because it's going to be a lot easier to divvy up your filling in the pan and I do this by hand. So let's say you grab up one quarter of this and you're going to decide how many samosas you're going to get out of here. Okay? So what you should do is just kind of make a ball. And so let's say I'm going to go for four. I'll split that in half. Split that again. And that looks like a reasonable sized packet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave these in the pan. So I got those all parceled out. So I'll swap out the gloves for now. I will be getting another pair after. Um, 
but it's time to get the filo ready. Try to get everything in the shot here, and it's not that easy, but here we go. So I always keep a few sheets of parchment handy for this. Now if you don't have parchment sheets, uh, you can use wax paper, you can use uh, damp cloth, because the important part is your filo not dry out. Now this will keep, the box says, in the fridge for a week, the remainder. Do not refreeze it. And be kind of gentle with this. I just kind of like to pull it out and leave it in its wrapper. This one is going to go. So keep it together as much as you can. Because what you're going to do is you'll notice the sheets are basically in half. Okay. And then after that part is in half as well. This is why it's so important that these be defrosted because if they're not they will just crack right down the middle right now and you're done. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count off quickly eight of these and you know what? It never hurts to keep the other ones nearby in case they break on you or you tear them which can happen quite easily well I think that's eight so I'm just gonna lift those up briefly and put them on the other sheet and then I get these rolled up and back in the fridge so I'll get these back on here and you can see they're starting to dry out already so I'm just gonna get a sharp knife and just visually cut them down the middle. If they're a little uneven, nothing to worry about. So what I will do is take these and just pop them right on top of each other for the time being. Okay. Just cover that up with the other half of the sheet. And put one here on top of it because you don't want to make like a total horrible mess while you're putting these things together and you'll see what I mean shortly. Okay, so there's your setup. You've got your fresh filo covered up here, you've got a working area, and you've got your baking sheet. Next thing to do is I'm going to pop some of this in the microwave and get a pastry brush. And just for you to see, this is what it looks like just come out of the jar. And this is just 30 seconds later. I will heat it up a little bit more because I do want it clear, clear. Yeah, that's 45 seconds. It's clear all the way through, ready to go. So I got all the setup there, and I've just got I've just got the pan of filling just out of the camera shot here. So get your ghee and your first sheet, which has dried out a little bit. It's not beyond hope. Now you don't have to butter this like all over. You can just put a few dabs, it will spread out. Because you gotta remember, the purpose of this is just to add some flavor and help it brown nicely. And also so the feel doesn't crack. But it does not have to be soaked for it to work. See, and okay, so that cracked, you can see that, that cracked right in one piece, but it will still work. So what you do first is bend this over in half, 
You can see it's cracking over there, but it's still salvageable. Trust me on this. Just grab a piece of filling. And starting at the end, just bend this over in a triangle shape at the end. Bend it back. Now for this one you are going to want to kind of sit it on top. And turn it over catching that again. And you can pull this down. And it's done. First one's always a little gnarly. And what you should do is just dust it briefly on the outsides with a dab of the melted butter and just place it on the sheet. Don't forget to keep that covered. And if it wasn't readily apparent, yeah, you do want to kind of be quick about this, all right? Because you don't want them cracking all over on you. This one looks like it has far better prospects than the last one. So what you want to do is shape it sort of like a triangle on one end. It looks like we got a bit more time with this one. Make your triangle shape again. Flip it over. Now if you're doing this right, at some point you should be getting right angles like that. Okay, this one is much more cooperative. So, flip it. Turn it. Flip it again. Done. Second one still looks a little nasty, but let's just keep plugging away. And you also have to remember, you know, I'm, I'm kind of all cramped up here for the camera. Um, if you were at home doing this, you would have far more room to work with than I do. So the first sheet is done. I'm just going to set that to the side and get another pair of gloves. And I'll get on the other side just to show you. Now let's just turn this over. ones at the bottom that haven't dried out so much and you know what if they are cracking on you beyond repair don't forget you've got like another pound in the fridge and you can always just get some more sheets especially if you're gonna have dinner guests or something now the reason I am doing this is just to show you that if you don't have a pastry brush and you are wearing gloves it's quite acceptable to just do this now one caution you should dot it and smush it don't pull on the phyllo. Phyllo does not have stretch and it will break on you, okay? But you can still do this just like this. And if you're willing to wash your hands and get a bit greasy, you don't even need gloves. Okay, sorry for the shadow. I'm losing the light a little bit. So I'll see if I can get right behind it. Yeah, it's working pretty good. And another roll. And done. Okay, I had a little crackage, a little breakage, but I managed to salvage all of them. And once they're baked, you won't care. So pop these into the oven for 15 minutes and then turn them over. So for a total bake time of half an hour.
It's halfway through, time to flip them over. Well, you can hear them crackling, and some of the pastry is kind of brittle. Whoops! <laughs> I didn't, I really didn't plan that. It just came off all on its own. There. Now, the leaves that do break, if that happens to you, just take them off because they'll just burn in the oven, leaving not too great of a smell. You could use a flipper for this if you wanted. I just find it works better with tongs. If you're not a complete klutz about it like I am tonight. So pop those back in for another 15. Second alarm went off, so they should be done. Let's see what we have here. Yeah. Yeah, the light's a little too bright to see that they're cooked a really nice golden brown. Um, let me turn off some of this and see if it makes a difference, yeah. Now, if you do want them a little browner than this, uh, you can turn the heat up to 375 and put them back in for a couple of minutes um, but you do risk burning the pastry so here we are I got them all piled up on a plate for you put the nice looking ones in the front so it looks good but uh, no worries they taste good no matter what they look like you can serve this with any kind of sauce you want uh, dipping sauce or some kind of chutney um, tamarind chutney works out quite well with this I do have a recipe for that and the link is here if you're curious of what I used to look like uh, when I was thin. <laughs> Which was a couple years ago. Hope I'll get there again. Anyways, thanks for watching and I do hope to see you again. Bye-bye.